Good morning, everybody. This is Sangeeta Saxena, editor, Aviation and Defense Universe, getting you live from Fandra Airshow. This is day four, and I'm here at the U.S. Partnership Pavilion at the stand of the Mallard Enterprises, which, friends, is a company of friends. And, uh, you know, we have with us the CEO, Mr. Dan Peabody, and we have the Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Mohan Chanduri, and we are here asking them, these are the guys who will be making news. So what is all this news? You know, they've been making news from the day one and uh, journalists like us are having a tough time covering every day. So we decided let this be the last day for us and let's ask them what is going on. So Dan, what is all this which is happening from the day one at Fanbra? Well, we uh, began with announcing uh, a number of uh, LOIs with new customers. Um, So, which brings us to a total number of aircraft currently on uh, on order from the company of uh, 80 plus. So we're pretty excited about that, obviously. And uh, we've been able to have a number of meetings here during the week with potential partners and uh, manufacturing partners with the aircraft that we'll be hopefully releasing some more uh, information on in the upcoming weeks. Right, and uh, Mohan, You've been a man who's running from the U.S. to India. It's either Hyderabad or it's, uh, you know, Delhi. And then we find you at Paris and then we'll find you at uh, Farnborough. What, what is all this running about? Are you getting all the right clients everywhere? Yes, so um, most of the conversations are about customers wanting to partner with us. And also we have other suppliers and other interested parties to partner with us because we see a tremendous demand in the seaplane market uh, and um, some of we are positioned appropriately for the customer needs. So um, all these different places we are getting a lot of customers. So that's how we came up with 80 aircraft on LOIs and similarly now we have other engineering partners and um, uh, manufacturing partners as well. Right, and uh, you have a huge market world over, but uh, you seem to be stressing a lot on India. Is India a high growth region for you? Uh, India is certainly a really high growth region. There is a lot of demand, and there's a lot of the government is also promoting the seaplane uh, in, in India with the Udan program, and even generally speaking, they're trying to go to tier three cities, and the last mile connectivity is really important for them. And so, um, and it's also a big market. Whereas everywhere else in the world also there is demand, but not as much or not as uh, quick-paced as in India. Right, and Dan, you just said 80 plus. Now, how do you manage to deliver the 80 plus? What are the deadlines? When do you start manufacturing? Have some of the LOIs got converted? Yeah, well, we're in the process right now of converting um, uh, several of the LOIs to actually deposit contracts. Uh, we're hoping to, um, you know, we, we don't have it. <coughs> we're working on our manufacturing schedule, but as part of that, um, based in part on some of the demand in India, we've actually partnered with some engineering services, a university, and uh, potentially doing some component manufacturing in India to make, uh, satisfy the kind of made in India aspect of the overall program also. We'll do the final assembly in Maine, but are hoping to do some component manufacture, manufacturing in India, have those parts shipped to Maine for the final assembly. And which means that uh, you have a supply chain which is ready, or are you in the process of increasing the supply chain? No, we're, we're in the process of uh, increasing and developing the supply chain. Uh, also, we're, you know, we're uh, progressing with our engineering design work so that that will enable uh, greater, partic greater participation of the supply chain once we're able to define a little better what we need for components and uh, design, uh, design specifications for the manufacturing. And by when will the seaplane become a reality? Well, we're hoping to have our first deliveries in 2028. Uh, so in 2026 time frame, we're... Uh, plan to build probably three test airplanes, so we'll have our flight test program um, beginning in uh, maybe mid-2026 time frame and through 2027 for certification. Right. And uh, Mohan, uh, you have been traveling quite a bit to India 
liaising with universities and IITs and IISCs and all the big brands in ac academics. Uh, what is the aim? Are you developing uh, with them an engineering setup? What are you doing with them? So um, we we are yet to make an announcement uh, in the coming months, uh, but we made one announcement of a, a MOU with one aeronautical school in Bangalore. Uh, but we'll be making other announcements as well. But we are um, looking forward, we're actually looking at creating an engineering services kind of entity in India that will allow uh, to take advantage of all the available engineering talent from India. Because most of these engineers go from India to other countries, but when we have them right there, we might as well use it. Especially since um, our demand is very high in India, so we want to also start building in India. So we are having other... Uh, we'll have other announcements about other partnerships with uh, suppliers and uh, other manufacturing activities happening in India as well. It's part of the Make in India program. And because you're saying building in India, does it mean that you plan to have an alternate final assembly line here? So um, a lot of those decisions depend on the total demand. So even though we have 80 plus now uh, as LOIs, we will first start manufacturing in, in, in the US, get the FA certification, then down the road we'll have some of the uh, components made in India and then that will en enhance into final assembly or customizations, things like that and then uh, it will improve over time. All right. And uh, in India, what certifications and regulatory mechanisms will you need to clear? Well, there will be DGCA requirements, um, but first when we have the FAA requirements, that will cover most of the DGCA, but we will work with DGCA as well to make sure that the end customer gets Flyable aircraft in, in India. Right. Is there something you'd like to add, Dan? No, I think that pretty much covers it. We've been pretty busy here, as you know, at, here this week in Farnborough, and uh, looking forward to continuing the progress on the program. Uh, Mohan, is there something you'd like to add? No, um, I really appreciate all the help that we're getting in India, and there is a lot of excitement. Uh, we are very much uh, positioned to be the leader in India and also in the world. And we have other players, competitors, we don't want to uh, downplay them. But I think this is a market that is really growing in the space for more. And you, uh, I'm sure, mean that there's level playing field for everybody. There's, it's, it's a big pie and the pie is growing. So there's space for us. Right. Thank you so much, Dan and Mohan. Lovely speaking with you all. The next time we meet, I'll have more questions and I'm sure you'll be able to give me a lot of more answers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.